Hey guys, so it's time to put a new clutch in the M3. Uh, I've been drifting it one season, probably did, I don't know, 15 to 20 events. When I bought the car, the car had done 200,000. The clutch was already kind of funky, but I mean, it held up the whole season and it still works now, but my, my, um, yeah, what is the name in this for English? I don't even know. This uh, release bearing, I think, maybe. The release bearing in the clutch is making noise. And when it's dry, my clutch will also slip. So I have uh, decided to upgrade it, even though I'm selling the car in a few months, because I'm getting a new drift car, more on that later. Anyways, I decided to upgrade everything to the best possible parts that I could get, so that the new owner is also gonna be real happy. That meaning also putting in a lightweight flywheel conversion from the self-adjusting clutch system that is in the BMW, which is kind of bullshit, to a you know a normal system that's not self-adjusting. So a lightweight flywheel, a new Sax Performance clutch. This is um, it looks like that. This is the this is the good shit. Um, what more? Yeah, the the uh, the throughout bearing or whatever they call it, and then a lot of a lot of small parts. You know, once you're in there, you wanna you wanna change your bear your bearing, <clears throat> your brackets. <clears throat> sorry, um, some seals and you know, I mean, one, once you get all all that shit off, you wanna you wanna do all of that. And so, so far I've, I've taken off my exhaust and all the um, plastic and heat covers and all of that shit. So it looks kind of like this now. You can see here is the um, um, gearbox. And uh, I'm now going to take off my... Um, uh, what is it called again? Jesus Christ. Uh, camshaft? No, no. Oh, fuck. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> I forgot the name uh, in English. What the fuck is the name? Jesus Christ. Anyways, gonna take off this thingy so I can get some more space on the, on the gearbox. Then I'm gonna put a, a, um, a jack or whatever you call it, uh, it's a gearbox jack under, and then I'm gonna loosen up these two so that the whole thing can come down a little bit, and then it's easier to get these bolts that are on the top of the gearbox. So that's <clears throat> that's kind of my next step. Um, I will make some more videos uh, to show you the progress later. Um, BMW. E46 M3 SM, oh sorry, DS6 uh, manual gearbox linkage removal from down, down under when you want to get the gearbox out. What you need to do is support your, your gearbox with a stand, take off these four screws, then let the gearbox fall down. You can see it, it tilts the whole engine, then you will get space up here. The first linkage is the first linkage is this one. It just comes off. There's a little uh, locking mechanism here. You can just pry that off, and a little shim. Then it slides out. That's the easy one. Then the next one, this one. You want to get this one off. This is the gear lever up in the car. It has this long boom thingy. Now you can see up there. There's a clip. That clip kind of sits down over so when you flip it up this clip you can you can you can pull out a pin or what you would call it and then this part is loose and you can continue getting your gearbox down and you also want to get this here down so much as you can so that you can get your extenders up and loosen those bolts that uh, hold the gearbox up so I, I couldn't find any videos on the internet explaining about how 
to get this linkage off. Um, so I made one for you guys now. Enjoy. Uh, so another update. Uh, to do this job, it's you know it's really a pain in the ass. But you need to do all of this stuff. So if you, as you can see, I've removed the the, the intake, um, the cold air intake from the car, and it sits here. That's been removed. Then I've removed all of the plastic here, along with the um, uh, what do you call it, the 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 radiator fan that sits here. Remember, when taking off this fan, it's links given. So taking it off is this way, you know? And when you buy tools for it on the internet, you will buy a key like that. That's to hold the, the fan drive. And this is to take off the nut. Now, don't do as I did and buy just from anyone because this is completely bullshit, you know? This, you can see here who made it, I think. Ah, you cannot. Anyways, they are both too short. So you will be fucking around down in the engine with your hands and getting cut up and shit like that. This key here should be 40 centimeters long. That's the right length so that you don't have to fuck around down there in the engine. This piece here should be even longer so that you don't have to have your hands down there. It should be 50 centimeters long and it should also have like a swerve so that it can go down and connect really easy so just remember that get these keys longer than what i buy this is 32 millimeter socket and you need it when you want to take off the fan so here you can see this is all the shit that has to come off now i don't know how other people is going to do it but some people say that you can support the subframe on the ground and stuff i'm going to do everything on the lift so what i have done is i've put on my engine bridge or whatever the word they're called hooked it up to the engine made it tight and made it so that i have a lot of slack that means i can let the engine down i've also put two piece of very good um thick paper uh, pap or what do you call it paper here and even an extra really heavy duty one here in front so such that this this nose wheel doesn't break my radiator, you can see. Once I start moving all this around from downstairs, it you could damage your radiator. So get this um, covered off and you should be good to go. Now, how it go? yeah, oh, I also removed this part uh, so that I can better have a look what's going on and stuff like that. So I'm expecting that once I disconnect the subframe, I will be able to get the engine um, down a bit. And then I will be able to tilt the engine a lot more than normally. And even as the engine and gearbox is like this, so I'm taking it down, I'm going to tilt it. And then I will probably even take it to the side like that. That should give me plenty of space to get at this stupid bolt on the side and after that i will then see what i'm gonna do about the the top bolts but uh, it should it should give you a lot more space i'll make another video in a in a moment or tomorrow or whatever when i get that far so uh, you know i mean i hope this helps some people with the same situation as me when you got the the, the top bolts stuck you know so yep that's it for now bye so here's another update. I have removed um, the subframe. It was actually not so bad. I mean, I got a lift that makes it helps a lot. I put a a jack under the subframe. Then I loosened it. Then I put a jack under the gearbox also. And then upstairs, as I showed you before, I have the the engine bridge that holds it. You know, just to make sure so I have lowered it quite a bit and supporting it with my um, with this big jack and then I've tilted the whole thing down now this is definitely the way to go if you have a look this is the gearbox tilt it down I don't know if we can show you 
if I can get some light down there. I don't know, you can see. Hmm. Let me get a different light so you can see what I mean. There you go. You can fuck my light. You can see the bolts. One, two, three, four. These are the bolts that you normally can't really reach or get. Now with the gearbox lowered like that. Look at the space I got here. You know? With the engine down, gearbox down like this, this should be no problem to take this stuff out. So, once again, the internet saves the day. And uh, this was the information I got from one guy at Bimmer Form, I think it was. Uh, he, a lot of people said you can do this and that, and do keys from ups, ups uh, from the top, and blah, 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 whatever. But this guy said, just loosen the subframe, take it down, push it forward, and you will have all the space you need. Now, you can see here, I didn't remove my airbox. Oh, uh, what do you call it? Um, no, airbox. The intake manifold, this plastic shit. I didn't remove that. That's a pain in the ass to remove. You know, I didn't do it. Look at the space. <laughs> I, how, how far the engine is sunk down. I didn't disconnect any lines other than the, um, uh, the radiator hose here. And that was to get all of that plastic surround up and away. That's actually the only fluids on the car that I've disconnected pretty much. So yeah, another video next time, hopefully with a gearbox on the ground. Uh, yeah, that's it. So some more progress. Uh, I think the last video I showed was gearbox was off. Now the clutch, I've taken the clutch off. You can clearly see there's some kind of oil leak or something going on here because there's so much shit. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it comes from, but I'm definitely going to change this this uh, um, seal here. And then behind that little plate, there's also a, what do you call it? Um, ah, I forgot the name. Again, with the English. Um, yeah, there's a seal also behind this. And that I'm definitely also going to change. I'm of course also going to change the, the, the bearing that sits here. You know, when you're in here, you better do all of this because it's a pain in the ass to, to get in here. Uh, anyways, I got the gearbox off. This here was also all full of um, oil and gunk and shit. I cleaned it all out with a pressure washer. I will replace this bracket this spring and also the, the the plastic thing in the back i know people say that they would never ever break but you know it's i don't know 25 euros or something so why not change it when you're in here so you fun, you know for sure that it will never break at least not for the next 200,000 kilometers you don't want to have a stupid spring or something break and then have to take all this apart again i mean it's a nightmare so anyways, that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to take off this, um, there's like a, like a plate or something here. You can screw it off behind and take that off. And I'm going to replace the seal that is in the back that seals the um, gearbox oil coming out. Just because I got it all off, it's easy. I'm going to clean this dial pin up and I'm going to give it some... Um, uh, copper grease so it's nice and easy going in and out if I ever should have to put it in and out again I mean and the same thing goes for the bolts you know some of the bolts they look like this that goes in the gearbox um, I don't remember if I ordered new ones I have to look if I put in the old ones I'm gonna clean them up and I'm gonna give them copper grease so that they are easy to get off should I ever have to take it off again um, this is how my um, my flywheel looks uh, I mean you can clearly see there's been some slippage going on it's been hot that means that the clutch has slipped rotated on the disc made it so hot that it's 
that it's got different colors on it, you know. So, I mean, anyways, it's garbage, you know. Let's see here. Fucker. And here is the clutch. Actually, the clutch itself. The clutch itself is, isn't bad. I mean, I've been drifting a year and I don't know when they changed this clutch, but look, there's plenty of plates left. But again, it's, I'm using it for drifting. It's been running in oil and shit. I'm not going to use any of this stuff again. It's just throw it out and um, put the new stuff on it. You can also see here how it's decolored because it was so hot at one point in time. So that's about that's about it. Oh yeah, what more to show? There's also a plate that goes there in the engine. You can also see it's dirty and stuff. Also gonna clean that all up nice and tidy. And then it's on to putting on the new parts and shit. So more on that later. So I'm just put on the flywheel. Put on the clutch and the pressure plate, centered everything, torqued everything down, so I'm ready to put back the gearbox. Um, finally starting to put uh, parts back on the car, which is nice, so hopefully it'll be finished soon. <sighs> gearbox is here, everything is ready, little loop-de-loop -loop on the shaft and shit. Um, torque specifications, I will put the torque specifications for you guys in the um, description of this video you can also stop the video and maybe have a look here the excess I just made because I I did that already but these are the stuff that you need uh, to get everything back on the car so that's it for now so I finished the clutch job, car is running good, a uh, little bit of rattle from the gearbox, I think it's because I put, put on a new racing oil for the gearbox, hopefully it will go away. And we are here at Vize for a little bit of drifting with the new clutch. This is right now, it's a group, group two, that's out. So that's kind of the end of the clutch install video. I didn't exactly show you the last steps of putting everything together, but I think that that doesn't really matter. Um, job is done, clutch is in. It feels really good. It bites really good this clutch and it gauges right away. The pedal is a little bit heavier and I wouldn't exactly use this clutch on the street. You can, but I would go with a little bit less aggressive clutch for the street, but uh, for drifting it's really really good. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, yeah I hope it, uh, it's helpful for somebody who wants to do a clutch job on, on their own car. Bye! Oh and a quick update now, this is a picture of uh, the bell housing of the, um, of the gearbox. Now. I didn't change this um, cover or what you would call it. I did change that. I changed the spring. I changed everything. Pretty much I changed everything. I changed the seals. I changed everything. But my clutch is now rattling because this stupid cover here is a little bit worn. And then the, um, what you call it, the throwout bearing. It seems that it can rattle a little bit on this cover. So 
when you do this job, just replace all these parts that I mentioned in the video, but also get get this, get a new one of that stupid thing so that you won't have um, this rattling issue that I have. That was, uh, that's about it.